So what we've got here, while I'm finishing up tightening, what we have here is a vacuum cleaner. Uh, this is uh, the, the, the perfect uh, line and there was a pretty severe short uh, I don't have the extension to show you handy but a very severe short had burned out the line connector here where the extension cord comes in to this control box the entire control box all the, the wires that both grommets on both sides everything fifteen dollars and, and that's just that's just fantastic so finishing up putting it together now because it's a short the switch I had to inspect pretty closely the switch get on there which had been an issue oh of course check out what happened look at the corrosion I mean the, the, the charring on this that's just that's a lot the switch that was in right here which I don't know where in the shop it is at the moment I would have rather it be here the switch is a double pole single throw and one side no matter what you did was open the other side worked great that side was the line side the black wire so I put the entire thing back together use nice crimp joints and everything and hooked it up to uh, a Variac which is now I gotta move the cam I was afraid of this I have to move the camera now to show you or to keep it into in view there we go this guy right here so I've plugged it in to the shop strip and the output of this I'm going to use this little guy which is a breakout that I did now it looks like hell because it's going to be self-contained I'm gonna have the black as a jumper LEDs a, a fuse the switch and everything but they need it right now uh, I was building this just for this purpose of splitting out the line why because I have a clamp on ammeter that I need to clamp on here and see on the line here whether or not there is a short so I'm going to use the Variac to turn up the voltage ever so gradually monitor the current being drawn here and see if I actually have a short now everything's isolated I've got a 15 amp I think a 15 amp fuse in here Variac has got a 20 um, I'm just gonna hang this meter and plug it into the Variac uh, like so oh. now I'm ready to go so I have an on off switch here I have LEDs showing me when there's power available on both ends of this little guy this is just a cannibalized um, extension cord and I have it plugged into the new switch which is off right now so basically I'm going to see what happens so first things first I turn the meter on it's clamped onto the black right here the black goes down to the switch then it goes to the fuse then it goes out the cord so what's going to happen here is the black that comes down this line first has to hit the fuse which is the right way to do it from the fuse it decides whether or not it's going to be on or not 
and the black wire, these two always stay connected as you can see I've barrel connected them. This little guy is going to be the power going directly into here. So I won't see the LEDs light up at low voltage, but let's see how it works. So first thing I do is I crank the Variac all the way down. You're not going to be able to see the volts on here, I guess, unless you're really good. I'll turn it a little bit. Is that, does that help any? Probably not. Now, I'm still off here. And there we go. I've just now connected. There's still no power, but I've connected everything up. And unless I hit this switch, we're not going to be able to tell if there's a short here. Right now, I'm, I'm going to mention that detecting a short with AC equipment is not the same as DC like in laptops and computers that I fix because there's reactants. And what this means is that even though this motor is a couple of ohms on a DC ohm meter and you'd say, oh, it's a short. To AC, it's actually a load, and that's why you can't just use a DC uh, ohm meter uh, or, or, or continuity mode or diode mode or anything for AC loads. You have to get a, an ammeter, and unfortunately, this Variac does not come with an ammeter, and I think I'm going to bolt one onto the side of it. Uh, and I can use the 120 coming in to power the digital ammeter because normally when you do it in line, right, you don't have enough voltage on the output to power the actual meter. So I'll power it from the 120. Anyway, let's see what happens now. Hopefully I've wired everything right. So the switch is on. It's already drawing, and I don't know, oh, I know why. Because the LED circuit in here, I'm drawing 141 milliamps. And... There's no way of me telling whether you can see that. I can tell if it's reflected like that, right? But I guess I'm going to have to hold it like this. So with my left hand, I'm going to crank the voltage up. And let's see, we should hear this go, or before it even has a chance to spin, I should see a short here. So we're at 120 milliamps right now. I'm going to crank the, oh, look at that. It's only 4 volts, and it's up to 1 amp. Okay, 2 amps at 7 volts, and I'm starting to hear the motor spin. 2.6 amps at 9 volts. You can hear it now. That's 3 amps. We're at 13 volts. 20 volts, we're at 4 amps. Five amps at 32 volts. So we're not blowing fuses, we're not, you know, nothing like that. That's 50 volts, 5 zero, 6.8 amps. Volts, 10 amps. You can read that, 10 amps. Let's go up to 120. Eleven point two seven. And I powered it down by shutting off the variac. I don't like when they're live and I've got exposed wires on a project like this. I don't like tampering with it. So now I'll turn that off. Now I'll turn this off. And there you go. So the short was fixed. Um, it's astonishing that this can run at less than 10 volts and the, and the motor spins and everything. Just love commercial equipment. They're built so well. So the virtues of a clamp-on ammeter cannot be overstated. That's it. She works. Problem solved. <laughs>